Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Sideshow Collectibles 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at yet another Clone Wars figure, this time the Ark Trooper known as Echo. Now recently I did put up my fives video, if you haven't already, pause this, go ahead and check that one out. That was the Ark Trooper I reviewed first, but just like that one I want to say a huge thank you once again to Keith Dillon and his dad Dennis for hooking me up with both of these Ark Troopers. Troopers. I'm still on the hunt for a Commander Wolf, however, so if you know anyone out there who's selling one or you're selling your own, hit me up on Instagram or Facebook Messenger. Now, if you are looking to purchase a Neko or indeed a Fives or any of the other clones, they're getting a little bit harder to find. Obviously, the resurgence of Clone Wars Season 7 has made these guys a little bit more scarce, so in my personal opinion, the best way to find them is to check out eBay, Gumtree, your Facebook buy-sell groups, maybe even places like Craigslist over over in the United States. Unfortunately, there isn't a website that you can just go ahead and order these from because these guys are long since sold out. However, if you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new content goes live on the channel. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for Ark Trooper Echo. Now, as you can see, an image of Ark Trooper Echo right there on the front of the box looking absolutely fantastic, just like we saw with Ark Trooper 5s. Unfortunately, this isn't the exclusive version. This is just a standard, but I'm not here to complain. I'm still very glad I was able to pick this guy up. Look how awesome he looks. Now, of course, you do get that unmasked head sculpt, and just like we saw on the 5s, it looks to be a newer design, a little bit more cartoonized, but I'm not really here to argue about that. It still looks really darn good on fives, so fingers crossed the one for Echo looks awesome as well. I actually did struggle to decide which way I was going to display fives in the display. I might do the same with this guy. I can already tell that's looking incredibly awesome. Of course, when the Hot Toys, Commander Cody, and of course, Captain Rex head sculpts come out, we will compare them to the previous Sideshow versions, and we will see which ones are superior. I'm probably leaning towards the Hot Toys ones, but nevertheless, we will find out. But here we have Arc Trooper Echo, and he looks absolutely sublime, just like we saw with Fives. The detail is on point, the armor looks great, the weathering is absolutely spectacular, but we'll talk more about him a little bit later in the video. Now, of course, you can see the unhelmeted head sculpt, a blaster, and just the normal Star Wars display base. Now, underneath, we do have all of his accessories. This, of course, being a newer style Sideshow Trooper, we do have the slimmer profile box. Of course, the accessories are underneath rather than on a separate flap, which I think makes a little bit more sense. But either way, what we're going to do now is get all of these accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with Arc Trooper Echo. Now, as you can see, he comes with a bunch of stuff, but just like his brother Fives, he is missing the running feet. And I think that's because of the extra armor plating that they put on the shoes themselves. They couldn't figure out a way to make it look like it's supposed to be bending, so they ditched that altogether. And that is totally fine if you ask me. Now, now let's take a look at the display base first. As you can see, a traditional Star Wars style display base, circular in nature and very slim. It'll definitely get the job done. And of course, it's a regular crotch grabber style. This, unfortunately, is the one we get with the standard one. If we'd gotten the exclusive version, you would have seen a nice white one with the print of the helmet on the front there, just like we saw with Fives. It would have been nice to have the matching, but still, I'm just glad that I was able to get Echo at all. Now let's take a look at some of the weaponry. If you've seen the Fives video, you'll know that this is the exact same DC-15 with the Ascension Cable attachment. You can remove that if you don't want it on there, but I do like the fact that you can have it on there, give it a little bit of a difference when you have it posed alongside some of the other clones. I've seen people with all of their troopers holding this weapon, and they do look good, but when they all look identical, it's a little bit monotonous, so being able to give them something slightly different is always a treat. Now we do have, of course, the DC-15A. Again, the iron sights off to one side. I'm noticing a trend, I think it's actually supposed to be like that. Those of you who are more well versed in the Star Wars lore, do let me know down in the comments below if that's indeed true. Now this piece can move back and become a stock. Unfortunately it doesn't extend out. I would think for it to be useful it would have to sort of extend backwards, but still it does the job quite nicely. Now he does come with two DC-17s, painted much nicer than some of the previous ones we've gotten from other captains and commanders, just like we saw with fives. Some nice silver over the top there, 
silver trigger and of course some black for the handles where usually they're just straight gunmetal. This is definitely an improvement and I'm glad that towards the end of the line Sideshow was paying a little bit more attention to the paintwork on the weapons. Now it does come with these two little packs which are actually different to the ones we saw with fives. They're nicely weathered. The print though is identical between the two once again. They are pretty much the exact same. It would have been nice if we got one of these with Echo and then one of these with fives so they weren't the exact same between the two and if you have both of course you can interchange them. I do believe these are little ammo cartridges. Do let me know if that's what they are down in the comments below. Now he does come with his Arc Trooper backpack. This again just magnetizes to the back. It's nicely sculpted. It's nicely painted and of course weathered even on the back. That is a huge bonus and of course magnets are embedded in there. Pops on the back quite nicely and you'll see that a little bit later in the video. He also does come with a droid popper grenade. It's nicely painted just like the one we saw with the other Arc Trooper. It's got a subtle blue on the inside there compared to when we saw Captain Rex's. They were a little bit more haphazardly done. These look a hell of a lot better. Now he does of course come with the unhelmeted head sculpt. It has a fairly decent likeness to Tamura Morrison and of course comparing it to the one that came with his brother Fives you can see expression is totally different and Fives has the goatee with the little tattoo at the top there but you can clearly tell the these are supposed to be the same person. They do look good for back in the day. Don't get me wrong. These are great sculpts and they're painted very nicely. But now, of course, if they've done it nowadays, the technology has far and away improved and the skin texture detail would look even better. But still, these are quite nice. And the final pieces that he does come with are, of course, a bunch of hands, including a bunch of gesturing hands. Let's take a look at a more interesting one. Of course, this one being a battlefield gesturing hand. It looks good. Again, the gloves are more of a grey, though. I don't don't fully remember if the ARC Troopers were wearing this grey style undersuit. I would have at the very least liked the wrist pegs to match. They're black, these are grey. A little bit of a divide, I don't know why they've done that. The armour plates on the back are nicely weathered though. You can see they do have multiple layers of paint. There's some grey, some blue and also some black sort of spotting over the top. It looks really darn good and of course that's carried on for all of the hands. Now what we're going to do next is get ARC Trooper Echo himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have Arc Trooper Echo himself standing straight up and down the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And you will notice that he is having to use his display base. If you've already caught the Arc Trooper 5's review, you'll know why. There is a bit of an unfortunate design decision that Sideshow did make, putting the feet all the way towards the front of the actual legs themselves. He struggles to stand without the use of the display base. Also, the backpack is rather heavy, so he's a little bit wobbly on his feet. That that's rather annoying because the body is perfectly fine, the joints aren't wobbly at all, so technically he should be able to stand, it's just that one, that one annoying design decision that Sideshow did make. But overall, still with all of that being said, I love the way this guy looks, just like I love the way Fives look, he looks like a total badass, the armour is nicely painted, sculpted, weathered and detailed, and again, you can tell he means business, even though he's not carrying any weapons at all because he himself is a weapon and that is totally awesome. What we're going to do now though is punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have Arc Trooper Echo up close and personal and let me just say this guy looks totally badass just like his brother in the previous video. Now I'm sure a couple of you are wondering which one I do prefer and we'll get to that towards the end of the video because I definitely do have a personal favourite and I'm sure a lot of people do as well. But as you can see the helmet looks pretty much identical, in fact it's the same mould as we saw with Fives, just the paint treatment that's different. You can see the fin is present towards the back there and I said in the Fives video is this a phase one or phase two helmet? Clearly the overall design is phase two but also some elements are borrowed like that fin there and I do like the amalgamation. It looks great and it kind of does work in a phase one display and also a phase two because most of your clones do come with both variations of the helmets so I do like that he's a little bit more versatile. Also the rangefinder is articulated just like we've seen on any of the other clones that do include that rangefinder. Now the pauldron is slightly different on this guy compared to his brother. In fact I find this one a little bit less frustrating because it doesn't move around as much. It moves around a little bit, don't get me wrong, but it's nowhere near as sort of flexible and malleable as the one on Fives. Also he's got a bit of blue on the side there which I like, adds a bit more of a visual difference, a bit of a pop if you will. He doesn't however have that red flare on the front of his helmet there. Unlike his brother Fives, this one is a little bit more plain in the helmet department. Where he isn't plain however though is this front armour plate there. You can see that handprint that of course Captain Rex gave him. Technically though it was on his white armour
armor. So this is a replica, if you will, on the front there of that armor plate. Still looks really darn good. And so too does the rest of the armor. Nicely weathered and sculpted. You can see that detail is exactly the same on the gauntlet that we saw with his brother. Do let me know down in the comments below again what this piece does. If you do know, a couple of buttons of different colors. And of course, these pieces on the side as well. All unique to the Ark Trooper design. And there goes his backpack, which is one of the flaws that I do find with this figure. Unfortunately, the way this sort of pauldron piece is operated, when it moves backwards, it does tend to push off the backpack. The magnet isn't as strong as I'd like, but still, when it sits on there, it looks fairly good. Overall, there it goes again. It is a still very nice looking trooper, but some pieces like this I find a little bit frustrating. Panning the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the armor on Ark Trooper Echo. Now, as you can see, obviously the detail continues on throughout. It perfectly matches the upper part there, and it looks really good at the same time. The weathering is great, the sculpting is of course really good as well. Now let's start off by taking a look at the Karma. Unfortunately, fresh out of the box, I had to do a little bit of work myself. I had to take off the belt and then put the Karma up underneath it because it sort of had sunk down like you would have saw in the unboxing segment. Totally easy to do, a non-issue, and now it looks perfectly fine. I'm luckily not having any of those sort of peeling issues that I had on my fives, which I do appreciate. This one has held up a little bit better. Now, as you can see, the Karma is also nicely weathered. I do believe that is printed on there, which is perfectly fine, and it works quite nicely. You can see one side is white, and one side has a little bit more blue detail, but overall, it looks really good. Now, these straps over the front that extend around to the back do get in the way with posing sometimes, but they are fairly malleable, and you kind of can move them around, so they're not all that bad. Now, just like on 5s, the DC-17s sit in the holsters fairly loose, so you will have to sort of press them down to get them nice and snug in there so they don't fall out when you're posing them and the same thing can be said with these little ammo boxes they sort of float around in there as well they're not all that secure now the armor as you can see is nicely weathered all the way down to the feet these pieces are new or at least new for the arc troopers back in the day that sideshow have made and they look really darn good it's basically an armor piece over the top of normal clone trooper armor it's extra bulky and i love the way it looks and they do love the these feet as well. I love this extra armor plate over the top there. That looks fantastic. And of course, that's why you can't get the articulated feet. That armor plate just made it not possible in the grand scheme of things. Now, something that I didn't mention on fives that I will mention on this guy after sort of posing them around is the fact that the feet, for some reason, sit all the way forward. These should be a little bit further back. That means he's a little bit more top heavy when you're trying to get him to stand. And now for a quick side by side comparison, here we have Arc Trooper Echo standing along alongside his brother Fives. Now the armor is pretty much identical between the two, all the way down to the pauldrons. The only big difference, of course, is the fact that the pouches are on the other side. Everything else though, is kind of identical, except for the paintwork. Now, if this is deja vu, you've already seen this comparison in the Fives video, I apologize, I'll try and keep it brief, but where you're noticing the big differences are the colorations. When you look at the armor itself, even down to the undertones on the chest plate, it's slightly different. The blue is a lot more vibrant on Fives, and I did say that I'd tell you which one is my personal favorite in this video, and I will. It happens to be Fives himself. I like the more vibrant blue. It really does pop on the shelf and that subtle red coloration on the helmet really does help as well. It adds a little bit more of a visual flair and that I really like. Just going over articulation on Arc Trooper Echo. Now for those of you out there who know how rare this guy is, it kind of makes sense to you that I don't want to push the joints anywhere near their limits. If you have your very own Arc Trooper Echo or in fact any of the other clone troopers from Sideshow, you kind of have an idea of how these guys move anyway and if you'd like to push the joints further than I'm willing to go, that's totally your prerogative. But starting off with the helmet itself, it does go forward and of course side to side, bit of pivot. The pauldron itself will hinder the articulation just a little bit like we already saw on Arc Trooper 5s. Now the arms go out to about there, you get forward to about there before the multiple pieces of armor do start to collide and you lose a little bit of the articulation. Now you do have a swivel at the upper bicep and a butterfly joint in there as well, but when we move down to the elbow you will see a couple more bits and pieces colliding into each other and causing a little bit of a disturbance as you can see. When you bend the elbow you don't get that full range because this piece kind of sits inside the joint. You can 
move it around to sort of optimize your elbow bend, but it will require a little bit more futzing. Now, of course, down at the wrist, we do have a traditional 1-6 scale sideshow joint, and that is on each of the hands. Now, for the actual body itself, it's pretty much fixed. You get a slight bit of forward motion, but because it's sitting right up against this lower abdominal piece, I don't want to stress it too much. Some of that paint might chip off, so do be careful. Now, the interesting thing is this stuff is fairly malleable, so it will get out of the way when you're moving the legs. And again, the joints are nice and stiff on both of my ARC Troopers. You get out to about there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee, and it has the same issue as, of course, the elbow itself that piece tucks inside the joint. So move stuff around and you'll find the ability to get him into some poses that you probably didn't think was possible out of a fully suit of armored style figure. Now finally, down at the feet, we do have regular sideshow style feet joints. You do get forward and back and of course some swivel, but you can rotate the joint inside the foot and get a little bit more pivot. Just wrapping up on the Ark Trooper Echo figure by Sideshow. Now this guy is an absolutely fantastic release from back in the day, but that being said, he commands a significantly higher price tag than some of the other clones, which are already going for insane amounts of money. So you're probably thinking, just like in the Fives video, is this guy worth it? And it's going to be a bit of a cop-out answer, unfortunately, because I'm going to have to tell you, it's going to be up to you. If you really do like the design of the ARC Troopers and you absolutely have to have them like I did, then yes, it might very well be worth it. But if you're kind of more of a casual Clone Wars fan and you just kind of like the design, in passing, maybe not for you because these guys are incredibly expensive. But still, if you do decide to go ahead and pick them up, not necessarily the worst decision in the world though because they look absolutely fantastic. The weathering, the paintwork, the armor, everything about these guys is second to none except for that annoying issue that they do have with the feet. Why didn't they put them towards the back of the actual ankles themselves? Now they can't stand without the display bases. Yes, you're more than likely going to use a display base anyway but you would have liked to at least have had the option, I personally would have, in the display to have them in more dynamic poses without the need of that annoying display base because sometimes it can get in the way. But overall, I still love the way this guy looks and of course with fives as well, having the set is fantastic and yes they will be displayed prominently in my newly formed Clone Wars shelf so stay tuned to the channel for an upcoming collection tour and if you want to know when it's coming out check the link down in the description below to head over to Six Scale Network I will be letting you know when the upcoming videos are scheduled so you'll know when to expect that collection tour and of course what else is coming up on the channel like comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.